So, so our first uh, contestant is Rock Band, so tell us. So we create a infinite multiplayer Rock Band platform uh, where you can have up to three instruments of infinite number playing on the same protocol. We have a really, really nice DAC that does very high quality audio, actually CD quality audio, but with a slightly less number of bits for the uh, actual DAC itself. So we're running an 8 bit DAC at 44,100 times per second uh, to create audio this good. So, ready? Wait, talk about the piezos. Okay. So, our drum pads actually have studio electric modules on no sensors. So for the drum section, on amp circuit design, we all custom pieces. Can you zoom in on the amp circuit here? Uh, we actually have an off amp circuit that will check when the drum yeah, set is set. I see it. I see it. Okay. One or zero light, so we can then read as a switch input. So the guitars actually have potentiometers on them. We did some simple DSP, so it doesn't even just detect if it's being strummed. It just detects how fast you're strumming. Uh, the modules are all hot swappable. You can plug the drums to any controller. You can plug the guitars to any controller. And you can use the main interface to select if you want to be guitar drum to phase one now. We have a star power in the uh, We were about an hour away from getting star power to connect to the sensor that you would tilt up and start it. Uh, you get my screen. Triggers and That's star power. So your score is determined by hitting your Which, which one? Oh, it's going down. Maybe someone else is going to get it next. Sorry. I had it. Okay. 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 So we're going to have a whole bunch of songs on here. Uh, okay. So this is a Mario Kart with a K. Tell us. We did two-player Mario Kart over UART. Uh, player two is a remote uh, that's connected to this main box, which is player one. Uh, we have two courses, Mario Circuit and Rainbow Road. Um, so we can do Mario Circuit. So we have 3D graphics, if we can just focus on it. Uh, you can actually see the other player on the screen right here. Uh, you can get various power-ups that allow you to have an advantage over the other player. So that was the bullet bill, which takes you forward, that, or basically like autopilot, like. Uh, like in the real Mario Kart. So is there a laptop under there? Those aren't TM4C120. They are TM4Cs. I got another bullet bill, so I'm going to win this race. Uh, let's see if we can get any other power-ups. Yeah. Okay, for some reason we're all getting bullet bills. But there are other power-ups. If I can just find one. So here's Rainbow Road. It switches music. Same deal. Uh, so you have two players. Yes. How many microcontrollers are there? Uh, two. Two. two so they're communicating over UART. Um, yeah, throw their shell. There's also a speed boost. That's another one. Uh, that's basically uh, one other good feature we have is that we actually made it cross-platform. So, yeah. so these we're just using local host basically. So you have to focus on the window to control it, uh, but it it works. Uh, if I go like over here and catch up, you'll see me on the other screen. All right, so, so team number three is Astro Party. Okay. Uh, tell us what it's, uh, yeah, I'm ready for a party. Yeah. So it's a two-player game, and um, so basically you're a ship, and you're trying to kill the other person. And then, um, so you only have one button to rotate, and then the other button is to shoot. So, and you're um, always accelerating. Yeah, you're always accelerating. So let's just start demoing. So... Basically, so so this is this is uh basically how it works. Um, this is so we have different. So yeah, we have different. That was the laser, and then this one is the the blade. Oh wait, I can't. I'm bad at this game. So then, ah, I can't. I can make a game, but I can't play it. <laughs> so, uh, so if I run through walls, it'll destroy it. And then if I run to the other player, he'll die too. And then this last power up is just to reverse the direction. So I would go so you're the always other way. Accelerating. Yeah, you're always accelerating. Mm -hmm. So yeah. When you hit something slow. Right. And then, so wait, let's just kill each other. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> so so he if he shoots me. Right, <laughs> so let's just play, and then. <laughs> also the, the particles and stuff. I use the random number generator, and then it's like a lot of physics, a lot of physics. <laughs> and then. Like, Astro party. Yeah, this is Astro party. This is Astro party. So this is Bomberman. 
Hello everyone, our game is Bomberman. So basic rules are, uh, we have a map with four players at each corner. The map has per permanent barriers and also destructible barriers. And basically your player can drop bombs and you're trying to destroy the destructible barriers and then trying to bomb each other. So we made these controllers. These, we base them off like the NES controllers. So you got like the D-pad over here and then There's A and B over here. So this game supports four players, but we're just playing with two right now. All right. So if I were to drop a bomb right there, I just died, so he won the game. All right, try it again. Yeah, all right. And there's also another mode to this game. There's also um, drunk mode. And um, that's quite, so in drunk mode, the controls are randomly generated, so if you press up, it might go right, left, down, left, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, so that's just the basic gist of the game. We can do four players, and it's actually really fun to play four players. I played in J2 with three other people, and we had quite the blast, all squinting at that tiny little screen. Um, so one of the harder parts of this game was, um, so we store the map as a big like array of um, size 165. There's 15 columns and 11 rows. And one of the harder parts of the game was trying to get the players to fit, fit in that array because um, everything in the, each block is one index. So we decided to store the players as fixed point, their positions as fixed point numbers instead. And with that, there's a lot of issues of like, oh, if they're facing this way, where do we place the bomb? Or how, how do we check if there's collision fast. detection? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he still, he still knows what's on the final. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We made a 3D racers, which is like a Mario Kart, but without the Mario branding. So here's the main menu. So if, if he presses A, it goes to the... We have we let you play up to two players with our controllers. Here, do you want to show the controller? I guess we shouldn't because of the colors. Okay. Um, but um, if we pick one player, we have, um, we have five different maps that you can choose from. Do you want to... And you already have players like right, two. So you can pick the color, and then we have a ton of different maps. Do you want to flip through them? So these are all hand, uh, handmade. You can make them in just any image editor. And then it's, so actually, when we made this game, we were very memory, conser we conserved a lot of memory. So if you notice, the maps, it's relatively pixelated. Also, each pixel has only, there's only 16 types of tiles, which means that you can fit Two pixel data or two two data for two pixels in each in each byte because each one only needs four bits. So we have the map compressed, which um, draws onto the compressed double buffer, which then goes onto the screen. We have a joystick to steer. Two eighty converters. Yeah. Um, all of the math is done in fixed point. We don't have any floating point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is pretty cool because that means we don't have to deal with weird rounding. So show us the, your two, two player. Two player. Okay, sure. So then uh, right now the player on the left is one player and the player on the right is two player. We can each pick colors. So you can see the other cart on the screen, like for example on the top screen, right? I guess oh. not anymore. Can you slow down? On the top screen you can see the other player's car. <laughs> Did we not tell you a month ago to pass the rest of your classes? <laughs> Look at that. So then, um, all right. So the can next I, is Space I, Invaders. Space Invaders. Invaders. Invaders from space. So we made Space Invaders. So it's uh, as you can see, it's just simply Space Invaders. It's. Uh, <laughs> It's There's nothing simple about this class. Come on, man. It, it, it's like a good take on an American classic. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, and so, as you see, we have hitbox detection, um, <laughs> bullet speed. We also have like a counter to count how many bullets that we create. It's pretty, pretty basic. Uh -oh. Invaders <laughs> 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 from space, huh? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right. So, as you can see, uh, we were told by Donald Trump to save America. And so, here we have uh, a bullet hell. And so, our code mainly basic is comprised of just um, a, we just made an algorithm to like create bullets and so we have a struct that we design a pattern with and then, and then we use a random number generator to output them. And so, we have multiple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so we have multiple bosses that increase in the difficulty of, uh, like, they have different patterns, and so as the mo the higher the more bosses you defeat, the more difficult the patterns get, and so um, we lowered the HP so that it's like quicker to get through, but like. Normally they have like around 250 HP, so it takes some time to beat them. It's all in color, by the way. The camera is washing it out. These are all yeah. red. Yeah, this is actually beautiful color. Yeah. Uh, th that was uh, Space Invader. Uh, yes. Pat all right. Patio Kart, inspired by our uh, our Lord and Savior, Dr. Pat. It's a top-down <laughs> racing game. You can go to select, and uh, you can choose your car color uh, when the game starts. Yeah. There's a little, uh, and then you can start going. <laughs> it will take three laps, and then it will give you your time. And uh, right now. Uh, how it works is the map is stored uh, at about one sixteenth of its size on the screen. Uh, we've just wrote two functions to amplify into our double buffer and amplify into the screen. Um, all the physics is the physics is calculated in a separate routine from the display, which lets us um, lets us not slow down the game if we want to slow down the frame rate. Right now, it should be fixed at thirty frames per second. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you hit a wall, it'll uh, play the oof sound from the uh, Roblox. <laughs> and uh, if you complete a lap, it'll play a oof sound from the So, um, that was like that something. Um, but yeah, pretty much the, the, the inspiration behind the name was uh, because for our LCD lab, we had a slideshow of Yelpat. Um, and later when we were developing the drivers for, for the map scaling, because we rode so far into memory, when we drove off the map, we were driving over the pictures of Yale Pat. <laughs> because uh, we didn't have index checking at that point. It looks like you made a printed circuit board. Yes, oh, actually yes, this, uh, this may look familiar. It's the, the same circuit board, the same main board as Rock Band is using. Because we, we were doing modular, we, we also have the same network uh, standard. So basically all we have to do is unplug our controllers if we want to have more, more uh, more of the more of these games and uh, Rock Band, and we can get the uh, main uh, PCBs from Rock Band. Um, and yeah, because we were we were gonna do intercompatibility on the, uh, um, so you can slow down. You can also hit trees. Let me find a tree. I need a tree. Got there's a tree. <laughs> I found the tree. It's, uh, they're beautiful trees, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The calculations are done fixed point. All right, so that was uh, Pat. Pat, Yale Pat, uh, inspired. Uh, inspired car. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, so this is, I can't read it. What's the name of your... We made a game called Nidhogg. Nidhogg, okay. It's, it's, a, it's based on a, a computer game. It's a fencing sword fighting game. So if I press start, he already went into the game, but I'll press start now, and now we're um, facing each other, so... <coughs> Yeah, um, so if you can see, um, I control the character on the right of his screen. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, if, you, if you look at the screen, so like a as I move, like it moves on his screen too. Yeah. And it's all done over UART. So the controls of the game is that if you press the blue button, you strike. If your sword, and the, the joystick controls the position of your sword. If your sword is down and you strike, you strike low. 
and your sword is high, you strike high. You can also jump, and if someone tries to jump over you, you can kill them out of the air like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the point of the game is to get to the other talking. side. Yeah. Alright, let's yeah. go. Wait, I, I can't even... <laughs> Sorry, snuck up on you. Oh, I got you. <laughs> kill me out of there. The, yeah. the goal is always to get to the edge. So, so killing them makes it just easier to get to the edge. Um, but alternatively, you could just run over them and try to get to the edge. Oh, <laughs> buddy, you better lose. Oh. <laughs> um, what's neat is like on my screen, I'm on the left, but on his screen. I'm also on the left. Yeah, so basically, like, you know, in real life, we always think we're right, even though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Midhog. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, we've created a Pokemon Showdown in this game. So, uh, we've created a two player Pokemon Battle Simulator. So, to start, like, both of us press A, and then the two systems wait for each other and communicate through UART. And then, so now we're in a battle phase. So, my Pokemon is Charizard right now, and his po Pokemon is Pikachu. Uh, we navigate the panel using the joystick. So, so uh, if I press A, I can see the moves for Charizard. So, I'm gonna try to get to Ember, which is really flamethrower, but flamethrower was too long to put on the screen. But oh crap! Okay, he's Thunder Wave. So, oh. <laughs> ooh, okay. So um. The way it works is we have uh, a database of Pokemon, and then at the beginning, when we start it, we randomly select from uh, those, and then uh, you get three Pokemon, and uh, then you just start the battle. So each one has their own unique moves, and uh, they can do every like they have uh, their own moves, and then you can also do use items which uh, heal you or like cure your status effects. Um, yeah, and then also uh, so every th all the communication we're doing is through UART. Um, so every time we do a move, we communicate all this, uh, like the stats <laughs> of the Pokemon, basically, and then um, we display it individually with each microcontroller. Mm -hmm. um, so here, if you can, yeah. So both microcontrollers move. are uh, executing the same program, but it's just uh, determined by the random number generator and yeah. the turns that uh, the player selects. So. Uh, so if you're feeling BM, you can taunt your enemy. They're red, bro. So when you turn the taunt, it's using an triggered interrupt, which uh, displays a certain taunt over to the other screen. No. As it seems as a theme for this, uh, we are using fixed point calculate damage <laughs> calculation because uh, floating point makes things a little more difficult. All right, so that was Pokemon yeah, Battle. So <laughs> awesome art, by the way. Pr very very pretty art. Right, so thank you for playing along. We got number ten yeah, uh, called Cube Q. Uh, so uh, our game is a very simple endless runner inspired by the flash game of the same name. Uh, you simply go forever trying to avoid cubes in this infinite 3D space. And as you go, it gets faster. And yeah, don't hit the cubes. The colors are all randomized. The sound used to be played off an SD card from Waves. Unfortunately, our SD card was very bad. And so instead of sleeping last night, we made it uh, parse midis and take the main line from that. And so it's just playing chip tunes, essentially what Lab 6 was doing. Uh, the 3D rendering is using uh, no floating point, no fixed point, no active trigonometry. It's all pre-computed, so all just integers, really basic matrix algebra, which is why I can run like a 60 FPS. Do you need to, you can slow it down? Yeah. The slide pot slows it down. Yeah, so, so the only control you have is left, right, and then your own speed. So you can play it slower if you want. And the, the faster you make yourself go, the faster your points will accumulate. You don't want to turn. Yeah, so it's just playing midi all day long. And that was about it. So was this in C or C++? Uh, I mean, we for for the rendering code, we took our C code and put it into structs, and it was C++. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Oh yeah, yeah. And, then, and then for hardware, we're as minimal as possible on hardware. So there's no no DAC. It's just a PWM. There's no like PCB. It's just the two buttons on your launch pad. It's great. And it uses the hardware PWM module on the 24C. Oh, yeah. Ah. yeah, thanks. That's it. All right. Thank you.